Hello there, my name is Stephen Ball and in this video we're going to look at binding objects into our application. Um, we're going to be looking specifically how we can deal with master detail relationships and the, the same technique is also used if you have an object that is a property of uh, a master object. So let's get in and have a look and I'm going to just show you through, I've moved, if you've seen the previous videos, we've moved uh, the foo objects into a specific unit here so we can see them clearly. Uh, basically we have a, a foo list which is an object list of type tfoo and tfoo has uh, three properties on it, a name, a value, but it also has now a foo2 which is an instance of a tfoo2 class. So the tfoo2 object itself has just got a single property just for the demo, pur uh, demo purposes here uh, and that's foo2 value um, which we're setting up in the constructor. So let's just go and have a look at this running and then we'll break it down in code. So here we can see we've got Bob, um, he's got a value of 100 and the foo2 value is Bob's foo2 uh, and if we go ahead and change this to 222 and we can navigate, we can come back, we can see that's been updated on the, the original object. So how do we get to that? Well let's jump back to our main form. Um, here in our constructor we're creating our three objects that we're using, putting them into a foo list. And uh, in our previous example uh, we were creating our first two live bindings uh, using code rather than the visual um, element. Um, now we've got an additional live binding that we've added using the same principles but this time the data source is a different prototype bind source and uh, linking to the foo2 value property. Now the new prototype bind source has the foo2 value so this is now matching against the second object the original one is matching against the first object without the sub property and then to make the link between the first object and then the child object on that um, we've created using uh, a class helper, uh, well, uh, not class helper, a class to help us along the way um, which we'll have a look at in a minute, um, a sync object. Now all that sync object does is it surfaces to us a master bind source and a detail bind source. Um, on the bind source adapters we then have the bind source adapter now being connected to the master one from the sync and then on the foo2 prototype bind source we're then linking that to the detail. And that will then bind those prototype bind sources at runtime to the live objects. So the sync here, uh, we tell it that it's a tfoo object. The sub object that we're going to be referencing to is a tfoo2. And here's the list of the master. And then this is a function to get the, uh, the child object, the, the detail object. And here we just say if the current master is nil, then return nil. Um, otherwise, because we're using uh, generics here, we can then actually use the typed scope for the master. Um, here we can see we've got the name, value, foo2. We can actually just return back the foo2 of the currently selected object. Um, so quite simple using an anonymous method here to send that data back. Now that's all we need to do. Um, let's have a look at the, the magic behind using the generics here. And I'll make this class available for download. Um, I'm going to look at trying to refactor this through so you can have multiple um, classes in the back end. Um, but basically we've got a reference to a specific function. Uh, using generics here we're saying there's two types. There's a TM which stands for type master and TD for type detail. And uh, we have two objects here then, or two classes here to help. Uh, one for uh, a master detail list, master list detail list, and here a master list with a detail object. Um, so they're very, very similar. One just returns back an instance of an object, the other one returns back a list. In here we can then see that as we create, we're creating a master list and a detail binds source adapter, which we haven't done code before. Um, and then underneath if we go and have a look at the constructor here, there's two specific events that are very important. 
Um, so if you want to do this manually, these are the two events that you need to be concerned with. The after scroll and the before scroll. So the after scroll event is going to basically check that we've got a detail and a master adapter. Um, if we have, then it takes the current master and it then fetches using the anonymous method passed in the detail and then sets the detail according to what's been returned by the anonymous method. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the before scroll will check the state of the master list and if the state is in edit mode then it's going to post. Now you could go ahead and modify this that you can turn on or off um, uh, automatic posting. Here we're then just setting, okay before we scroll make sure we post any changes into the detail object um, before we move on. And that's it. So by having this generic helper we could then pass in whatever objects we get returned with a master and a detail on it um, and then just use the nice simple sync object um, created to then give us a, an easy reference to our master and our detail um, and how to get the detail object.